folks. Welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. If you've only just joined us or you've been with us before, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, either being on YouTube or with your favorite podcast app. And if you want to join in on the conversation, we're building up a bit of a community on the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group where you can ask questions about today's episodes, past episodes, or give us ideas for future episodes too. Mm. Today, we're talking about something that there's a question that's been around for a long time and mm. always comes up and usually for people who are just getting into camping and that's fridges versus ice boxes or do mm. you choose a fridge or an ice box and which one uh, is the best? And I, I'll probably start out by saying I don't think there's a best. It depends on what your budget is. You can mm. use either or but we'll kind of cover we, off on the pros and cons. We've sort of touched on it before, haven't we, because we have an episode about keeping your food cool um, oh, yes, in did, summer yeah. sort of earlier on in the year um, but we haven't sort of – really nitty gritty looked at fridges v ice boxes in yep. great detail. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, you start off with the basics, I guess, brands. I mean, both of them have got a squillion different brands that you can yeah. choose from. I guess fridges are probably more structured in terms of kind of basic quality through to better quality fridges, pros and cons, and lots of different features in different brands mm. as well. But ice boxes are probably – Similar in a lot of respect, like quite often the same ice box can have a different label, but it's the yeah. same ice box. It's just yeah. got a different sticker on it. Um, I think you can still get probably a, a cheaper ice box um, or if you pay for a cheaper ice box, mm. you're probably paying for lesser quality insulation and the bits inside. Yeah. But it's probably still going to do the job to it. Probably agree. worth mentioning when we're saying ice box, we're not sort of talking about coolers or your no, classic like Eskies we've, or we've got not, a Coleman one in front on of us. Here, this so. wouldn't classify as an ice box. No, this is this is a cooler yeah. really, isn't mm-hmm. it? So the, the walls are quite thin. It's good for your lunch during the day or take to a picnic to keep things cool going to a house. But an ice box is a – if we had one in front of us here, we'd be peeking over the top, right? It's a bigger, bigger thing generally for um, keeping ice cold. It's essentially a fridge without the compressor and the refrigeration in it. It's like the same sort of level of insulation, super thick walls, yep. heavy lid, like prop, proper, proper ice box. In fact, um, Evercool have got a range of fridges that are Exactly that. It's just their, they've taken their ice box. They do, don't and then they? they yeah. just attach a, a obviously compressor calling, calling unit inside yeah. it and a compressor on the side and, yeah. it, and it becomes a really efficient yeah. um, efficient mm. fridge, slightly more sort of agricultural, not as polished in how it looks, mm. but really efficient, really functional. So, totally. so, yeah, definitely talking about the bigger ice boxes. And they're usually, what, sort of three, four, at least four well, centimetres thick around the I side? I would say six, I'd say, minim- what, four minimum six, yeah. sort of. I don't know. Uh, yeah, most so, of the ones I'd say would be about six centimetres yeah, on okay. average. The thicker the better. But then that, the, it's not just about thickness. It's also about the quality of the, the mm. actual insulation. Yeah, so that's true. The quality for refrigeration grade um, insulation that's been injected inside there. Mm. Um, so fridges, obviously the best known brands are, are um, Dometic and, and um, Dometic Engel. and Engel are probably like the Fords and the Holden. And yeah. When we say Dometic, that's known as Waco. So I think Dometic was, was a, known, yeah. a German company that bought Waco out, but Dometic fridges are essentially a Waco fridge basically. Yeah, Waco is what it was So like, Yeah, Waco and Engel is sort of like Ford v Holden in Australia. It's like – you know, you yeah. come across families who are like, oh, I'm an Engel family, and then you come yep. across families, no, nah, no, nah, Waco. Yeah, it's a campfire debate, yeah. And yeah, everyone totally. thinks theirs is the best, but yeah. they both, both do the job. Totally. And then there's other there's other bigger brands like Companion and, and a few other um, uh, bigger camping brands that do some that are – Like Mike Coleman's a fairly like new Mike one that's Coleman's, come on. They're good quality fridges, yeah. Yeah, they're really um, similar to the older uh, model Wacos. Like we've got an older model Waco. It's mm-hmm. really similar to the Mike Coleman's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're well thought out with a lot of features. And the other mm-hmm. one I do want to just – put a call out for here now is um, uh, Bushman Fridges, which is an oh, yeah. Australian company. Yeah. And that's – they've got – well, there's one sort of portable 12-volt fridge if you're talking uh, fridges that you put in the back of your four-wheel drive, but it's quite versatile. Um, in it's is that the extension, extension yeah, one? it's got mm. extension collars and stuff and, and a lot of baskets and stuff inside and they're really reliable and the service is good. So just want to put a call out for those as yeah. well because they're probably not as well known as perhaps they could be. That's true. And Evercore would probably be the other Australian company that's – more well known than Bushman's. Yeah, and they've even got some Australian made fridges now. They're down oh, under yeah, they do. series, which are a big fridge. Um, Is that the one that's sort of got that silver, the silvery sort of checker plate look outside and then blue it's plastic a, lid? It's, it's white on the outside. Oh, it's white. Yeah, with a with a blue lid. Yeah, they're quite bright in, in colour. But, yeah. Uh, and I think 
I think I've seen I've, I've seen one. Compressor and they seem to do the job pretty well. But they're an Australian made mm. option as well. So there's that's not, cool. I don't know of any other Australian made. Fridges, not not that we carry anyway. So not off the top of my head. Option, so, um, but the, Evercore also have a heap. They're an Australian company, but they have a heap that they make overseas and stuff as well. Mm. It's, it's a good quality or good, good um, efficient. There's brand. another one, Brass Monkey, which is relatively, well, it's new to us, mm. but it's been at J yeah. Car, I think, have stocked them for a really long time. Mm. They're like an electronics sort of retailer or what, what have you. There's a lot of yeah. customers that I've spoken to that have got models that we don't sell that have had them for a while. Mm. They tend to sort of be that entry level, more budget option. Yeah. But I think it just depends ultimately, like you mentioned at the beginning, there's a huge range out there to suit everybody's needs and yeah. sort of working out what's what's best for you is sort of the starting yeah. point on I that. I think so. Yeah, brass market are really well priced, but um, yeah, you just got to look into what you're not getting for yeah. the price and plenty of people had plenty of life out of them, so get good dollar, good value for money. Yeah, from it, totally. Definitely. So let's so cons of fridges, mm. downsides of fridges. Obviously, the first one is cost. So you could probably pick yeah. up the, the same average fifty liter ice box for probably, I mean, under at least under five hundred bucks. I'd say possibly under yeah. three to four hundred dollars for a reasonable uh, ice box, but a fridge um, with the same capacity. If we're talking a reasonable quality fridge, so if you're talking Dometic or, or Angle, you're probably mm. talking at Closer to the sort of one thousand dollar mark, the so, ground, so yeah. three to or two to three times at least the price. Mm -hmm. um, so the upfront investment is significantly more with fridges. Uh, obviously, more parts. So you've now got a mechanical item in your car, mm -hmm. uh, and if it's a four wheel drive, you've got corrugations and those sort of things. So mm -hmm. um, that kind of comes down to I suppose if you're buying a cheaper fridge, uh, maybe not made quite as durable as the more expensive ones. Um, so you now got compressor, moving parts. You've got hoses. You've got cooling elements. All the oils in the fridges, lock all of that, buckles, all these all, bits and all pieces. All those things mm. that can potentially um, fail. In saying that, I've had my angle for, uh, I reckon I got it in about two thousand and six, mm. and I haven't ever done any. I don't think I've even taken the cover off it ever. It's just it just keeps going. So I know a family who's got like a thirty two year angle. Yeah. That still runs, yeah. but they've had it sort of in one of those caravan. You know how you can go to a caravan park and you might have a permanent caravan at that park, but they move it off site and yeah. store it. And when you want to come and stay there, they'll like tractor in your caravan yeah. and it just sits in their caravan. 32 years still gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, there's, there's only one moving part in an angle compressor. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. It's, um, but yeah. So if you buy a good quality one, they do last a while. Mm. So if you work out the dollars over the period of time, it's still. If you if you're buying a fridge for thirty years worth of use, yeah, that thousand dollars suddenly becomes quite affordable. Because over thirty years, it's not, it's not that much money. But uh, they also require power, so you need to make yeah. sure that you have mm -hmm. a comprehensive portable power system that isn't just relying on your car battery, especially yeah. if you're going to be parking up and staying anywhere for any period of time. Well, if you do have, if you're uh, Always camping in places where there's power. So if you're a caravan park, then you can get by with using the power from your auxiliary. You need to just check some of the wiring and those sort of sides of it to make sure you've got yeah. enough um, the the output caters for the power of the fridge. But a lot of them have a two forty volt powering cable uh, yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So you can plug it into your car, or even if you leave home and drive all day and you've shut the shut the um, the fridge. It's an ice box, basically, even if you haven't got it running in the car. You get yeah. to your destination. Uh, if you've got 240-volt power there, you can run it off the 240-volt power when you get to the, yep. the uh, location and then, you know, that, You're that fine. does the job. But if you are camping remotely without that power, then there's an extra cost then, like you say, of mm -hmm. extra battery. And then you could then got to go further and think about how I'm going to charge that battery as well. And that, yeah, it gets yeah. big. We've got other other episodes that kind of cover those things if you're interested. Mm. Um, but power is a big one there, yeah. Um, uh, probably with fridges too, it, when you put the fridge in the car, so you've got a 40-litre fridge. Mm -hmm. uh, you compare that to a 40-litre ice box. The external dimensions of the fridge are going to be bigger because with the fridge you've got your 40-litre capacity and the insulation and then you've got that extra bit where the compressor goes and the control panel goes and all those sort of bits. So it's yeah. probably another – 10 centimetres of, of length 10 to somewhere. 20 centimetres somewhere, yeah. yeah. Whereas the ice box is the internal capacity and then we'll use a six centimetre example from before, six centimetres each side of insulation and that's it. That's mm. that's the entire ice box. So it's more efficient on space in your car yeah. if you're using an ice box. 
that's I guess yeah. it's a, a bit of a you, you trade everything off. A, and on that, they're also much heavier to begin with. Like if you've got an empty fridge, it's a lot harder for you to just move around an empty fridge versus moving around an empty ice box. Um, yep. And I mean, obviously, when they're both full, they're both heavy as. But it's sort of one of those things where you have to consider. It's more likely that you'll have to have like a, a permanent mounting solution or have yep. a fixed location for your fridge for storage. Yeah. Um, that you don't necessarily have the same requirement for that, like you do, uh, same requirement for that yeah. with an ice box. Yeah. Some of the plastic or polypro, um sort of exteriors are a little bit lighter, but I certainly mm. wouldn't want to be moving my angle every day. It's yeah. manageable, but it's a it's a decent unit to lug around. So yeah, yeah, totally. That's a good point. Uh we've we've jumped on the negatives first, but we'll we'll talk about the pros of fridges, which obviously the, the obvious thing is that you're just keeping things cold all the time. It's easy. You've always got you're not concerned about your your milk going bad. You've always got cold drinks in the fridge. You can you store things in there. It's a bit like um just your fridge at home, really, just on a much smaller capacity. So you're not worried about ice melting and those sort of things. That, yeah. that whole concern is um is is taken away. Um We've got an idea that says they're designed for use in harsh conditions like the outback, but I guess that the same can be said for ice boxes, I suppose. But as I, I think what we're saying there is you want to make sure you, if you've got a good quality fridge that's designed for the outback, then it is designed as such to last in those conditions. So Yeah, and it's going to have a compressor that's going to be able to run the fridge out and maintain it at certain temperatures, even if the ambient is like completely off the charts, yep. whereas an ambient ice box is still going to be susceptible a lot more susceptible, obviously, to uh, like huge hot temperatures and things like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, good point. That's I guess that's what we mean there. Um, but in in saying that, it does also then allow you to travel more off the beaten track. Of so course, if, if you're off on a two week trip, an ice box is going to last you a few days probably before you need to replenish ice. Mm-hmm. Whereas the fridge, you need to think about replenishing your battery or your yeah. power source, but. It's going to keep everything inside the fridge cool. So yeah, totally. Um, you've got a little more control over temperature mm-hmm. in a fridge as well. Yeah. So obviously, food um, like f- five degrees is kind of that happy mark for most food. Mm-hmm. Um, you can set your fridge to that temperature, and your food stays safe. In an ice box, you could put, you could use a temperature gauge, I suppose, to try and maintain it, but you can't dial the temperature down. If it starts to warm up, mm. you need to add more ice to pull that temperature down. You can't sort of set the temperature. So yeah. a bit more mucking around in trying to manage that. And there are ways, I think we covered in another episode, ways to manage that um, with sort of layers in your fridge and freezing the stuff on the bottom and using the stuff on the top to start with and not mm. opening your, your fridge, uh, the, um, sorry, the ice box uh, lid too much to try and manage the temperature inside, but it is more mucking around than a fridge. Yeah. And I think sort of in a lot of ways it can be a safer option if you're going for an extended period of time just to be 100% sure, yeah. especially if you want to take things that are temperature sensitive like meats and 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 stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, being sure that when you're a week into a trip that what you're pulling out of the fridge is being kept mm-hmm. at the temperature that it's meant to be kept at yep. and you're not going to die somewhere yep. on the side of a road from festy food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not sitting in the bottom of a – Swimming water, pool. Water swimming pool in the bottom of your ice <laughs> Yeah, with box. all your so, ice melting. Yeah, which isn't, yeah. Which isn't much good. Um, and obviously you've got – if you get a dual zone fridge too, you can – you've got – you can take frozen and and um, cold foods. Yeah. Consideration to how much power you're using to do that, but yeah. it gives you that flexibility if you if you need it. Whereas frozen, oh, you're not going to take ice cream in an ice box. You might might get away for a few hours, but Absolutely um, after no a hope. day it's not it's going to be cream, not yeah. ice cream anymore. Uh. We're going to stick with pros or should we go to should we jump to ice boxes? Pros or cons of ice boxes yeah. first? Uh, well, let's run through. Uh, we'll go cons of ice boxes just because then it's the in same the same, same order. Yeah, good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so firstly, they're just so covered. basic. Like, yeah, yeah we've, we have we have sort of already touched on this a little bit, but it's 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 basic. There's not moving parts. It's, it's literally just a nice big plastic box apart from the handles on the outside, there's no electrical components, there's no touch pads or control pads yep. or there's literally nothing to worry about. It's just a straight up box. So that's a pro, right? It's a pro. Not a con. Well, it's a pro in the sense Sorry, that there aren't um, ongoing costs yep. associated with it essentially. 
it had you could use it as a as a seat and everything. So you pull it yeah, out, yeah, totally. And sit on it. There's a couple of brands that do have accessories for them, like a seat pad and a fishing mm. rod holder and a cup holder and yeah, things like that that just openers. click onto the yeah. yeah bottle openers, all sorts of stuff. So I've yeah. got one that it's an ever cool one that's lasted me for ages and ages. Yeah. And it just I, I actually I have a fridge, but I I don't use it as much anymore. But I used to use it for things like um, bread and fruit and veg. It doesn't need refrigeration, but that always just came out and sat in the annex of my mm. tent, and that was a seat that I that I sat on. All of us sat on fiberglass shoes, and no, it was um the uh the it was an old yellow one. I don't know if they make them anymore. Called no, I know the ones you mean. It's the quite mate. thick polypropylene. Yeah, 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 just tough as nails. The the handles aren't even sort of folding handles. They're just they're molded handles. So yeah, it's just gonna that'll never break. That'll last me and my kids a lifetime. I reckon we're supposed to do cons, and I just started I know, with the pros. That's what I said before. <laughs> we did cons, and then you oh, jump in and go. I don't yeah, think yeah, no. I don't think the simplicity is a con. I think that's a, no. That's a you're good right. Thing. Simplicity. So but- for all those that are confused, we were going to do cons, and then we jump straight into <laughs> pros. So <laughs> sorry. So we're talking about positives here. <laughs> yeah. So well, are we going to keep going with the pros? Well, we might as well. People are going to get confused. Yeah, they are. Otherwise, so we'll keep going with the pros of the ice boxes. Afford- we touched on it before, but affordability. Yeah, you can, you can get a really good quality one for 150 bucks of yep. a reasonable capacity. Yep. And I think the other thing that I like about ice boxes as an alternative is there seems to be a much larger range of capacities mm. and because how we mentioned before because you don't have the external dimensions being taken up with compressors and motors and things like that it allows you to if you have a 25 liter cooler you just have this little 25 liter cooler do you know what i mean mm. it's not like a a huge big box with just this little 25 liter fridge capacity bit in it so yeah, there's a much larger range. It's more, it's it's easier then for you to make a decision about whether or not you want to have like a larger one that you might take away for longer trips or a smaller one for shorter mm. trips. And because they might only be 150, 200 bucks, it's not as big a deal. Yep. Whereas sometimes I find with fridges, people are start going, well, what capacity do I buy? Do I buy an 80 litre one or do I buy a 40 litre one? And what happens if I buy a 40 litre one and then you know, uh, my needs change or my family grows and I want a bigger one, but I've spent 1300 bucks on a 45 litre fridge, but now I need a 70 litre one. And then, or you're buying a 70, 80 litre one and you're consistently not using it very much and you just have this huge fridge. So I think there's more flexibility with ice boxes. Yeah. It's, it's, I've never thought of this either, but that got me thinking about that flexibility with modularity as well Mm -hmm. that you could buy, um, you, you might need 50 litres of storage space, but maybe you could make that up with two 25-litre ice boxes and one mm. that you've pre-cooled. It's full of ice. You've got everything in there. And some of these can hold ice depending on the external temperature, but some of them claim eight up to 15 days in some instances. Mm. Obviously, a lot of external um, influences can affect that depending yep. on where it's stored and everything. But you could say have two two of them, one of them sits at the back and you just don't open it. It's in there, there's ice in there, you're going to leave it there and that's that stuff for two or three days time. 100% because sort of Use opening it one. drastically impacts the length of time that, that's that, right, that yeah. es- the ice box will cool your food for. Yeah, so use the first one, finish that, and then move on to the second one and mm. maybe you can then refill that first one and put other food in there. So it's a really good point it. actually. So I never thought of that before. I actually think we've just become geniuses. I think so. Yeah. We're going to coin that idea. <laughs> that Can we get brilliant. a patent on that idea? Yeah. <laughs> Can we That's, do that? Yeah. You're right um, though. I never thought of it. Maybe I, I might end up scrapping my fridge now. Because people no. spend 1600 bucks on a dual zone fridge freezer. Mm, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas you could fork out a couple of hundred bucks for two smaller eskies and have your own dual zone system. Yeah, with some good ice packs like, or good ice um, packs. Good like quality ice packs, or, yeah. Or just blocks of ice. And if you put them in a good ice box, mm. pre-cool it. So cool it before you leave home. Put yeah. ice in there before you leave home so it's cold inside. And then before you go, put those – put sort of a third of ice in there if you can. I guess that's the only thing with fridges is that uh, – with ice boxes is that while you haven't got the compressor, you probably do have a bit of space taken up inside with the – um with the ice inside so you lose a bit of volume there. That's true. But if you do the trick of, say, filling up juice bottles or milk bottles with drinking water. You can drink it. You've got drinking water there. So even though it's sort of dead space, it's not technically dead space. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't drink a compressor. (laughs) I'm (laughs) thinking – I'm thinking even what here, my mind's even spinning further. What if you had a small small fridge that you ran as a freezer and you froze, like, say, three two-litre – Milk containers in there, right? You yeah. had that freezing and then two small ice boxes. 
I'm probably getting too technical now. You get, well, so probably freezing, because and as they ultimately do frost, you're freezing more and you're kind of You still have around. to run your fridge. So in that situation, I would just get a bigger fridge. All right, scrap that idea. Scrap that idea. But anyway, you, that's you not a bad idea there, the module you thing. You could have just stopped and everybody would have been happy, but now you've taken it too far and we're just mm, like, don't sorry. listen. That's bloody ridiculous. I'm a thinker. <laughs> Someone might go, that's actually a good idea. I'd do that. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. Um, so, um, uh, pros, we're in pros. Simple, no power. Uh, volume reflects how much storage you have. Obviously, taking yep. in mind how much ice goes inside, yep. you're losing that. But it's usable space because of the drinking water. Yeah, it's much more portable as well. Yep. becomes a seat yep. as well as a, a yep. table if you want. Um, yeah, something to sit on while you're fishing. The cons, cons is that you do you will need to keep refilling it. So it makes it really challenging if you are going off road or you are going remote where you won't have access to ice yeah. uh, and things like that. And and then obviously with if you're using ice bricks and ice bags and things like that, you then end up with a product that's essentially useless and yeah. that you have to cart around with you because it's not frozen anymore. Yeah. So even <laughs> though those sort of ice brick fr- freeze bags that last a long time, they're really good to use. They're probably only really a good choice if you're going to be going away for a short term, you know, yeah. a couple of days or something like that max. Yep. Because the last thing you want to be doing is carrying around stuff that you don't need. Because then they're just a dead weight then, aren't they? That's they're, right. Once once they're defrosted. That's right. And if you use bag ice, you're not going to get much life out of it. So, you won't, not and, at all. And for the most part, when you're traveling, you're probably only going to find bag ice. Mm. So in that respect- yeah, Unless yeah. you're doing stopovers at, you know, say caravan parks or whatever and you, you might be staying room. in a cabin or they've got a camp kitchen there that has a fridge freezer for use, you might be able to refreeze blocks of, yeah. you know, those milk bottles and juice bottles as yep. I mentioned before. That would be the only way around it that I could think of yep. if you're going remote with an ice box. Yeah, be probably only a few days at a time. Yeah. maybe I, I have done a week-long trip with an ice box before but it was a lot of management with – trying to make sure I use certain things beforehand and lays inside and I only did it once mm. and then bought a fridge. So. And literally every time you open it, you're drastically reducing. I know yeah. I mentioned that before, mm. but it just – that increases how inefficient your icebox is going to be. That's right, yeah. You can manage that with – I always put <laughs> sheets of newspaper. So I open it and then move what I want for the day on top of the newspaper – and then close that. And then when I open it, the newspaper kind of traps the cool air underneath the newspaper mm-hmm. and you just got that space on top. But you're still reducing, like you said, you're still reducing the yeah. efficiency because you're letting cooler air in all the time. So, yeah, more management. Yeah, I know you talked about it before about having the fridges and the ice boxes and using your fridge to you're freeze. Back onto it now. Well, I'm onto it, it because <laughs> the way that you talked about it was a terrible idea. Why I don't understand why anybody would just run a fridge purely to freeze ice bricks for their skis. That's silly, but it is beneficial because I know, yeah, I, is- know I know I've talked about it before. <laughs> but if you're freezing things like um. I mean, you know, I mentioned how, oh, if you're stuck with a 40 litre ice box and you need, I mean, your 40 litre uh, fridge, like a 12 volt fridge and your needs are changing and you need more size but you don't want to invest in a new fridge, an ice box is an awesome option because you can run your fridge freezer as an actual freezer for your food storage for your trip and then you can put your defrosting stuff into your ice box and then that will keep your icebox cool for other things like milks, cheese, whatever, because you're defrosting a big thing, a spag bowl that you might have cooked beforehand or something along those lines. That's when it's helpful. <laughs> I reckon then though you're pulling stuff out of your freezer that you're running right and then you've just got this empty f- freezer or you're going to be pulling enough power to keep freezing that big space, whereas my idea, right, we're on an argument. <laughs> park, you know, right? If you just had a small fridge, small freezer, right, yeah. and, you, and you're, you're freezing, say, I don't know, 10 litres of space, yeah. 10 litres of ice, right, and and you're just freezing that. You're only, you're only, that's all you're doing with that little fridge mm-hmm. and then you're using that to cool down 40, 50 litres of, of ice box space. I don't know. I haven't thought, I'm thinking but what if you're going I'm away? To, I'm just what if you're going you away wrong, for really. up to two weeks? We'll just, I think you just take a fridge. <laughs> I could probably <laughs> <Okay>. fridge. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about for people who want a larger fridge but they don't want to buy a new fridge. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So essentially instead of, you know, s- selling the fridge that you have secondhand or whatever, keep it, spend a couple hundred bucks on a really good quality ice box yeah, okay. and then you're going to have a setup sort of like a dual zone fridge freezer 
anyway. Yeah, okay. Do you know All what right. I mean? Yeah. So you're running your icebox as a fridge and you're running your freezer as a freezer. Yeah, okay. And then as you eat your spag bowl and your strog meals or whatever over time, you have enough space there to chuck a whole bag of Zoopa Doopers in. <laughs> All right. So okay, you're right. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a really good option for people to extend that the space they need for food yeah. without buying a bigger fridge. Yeah. So there's lots of different ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a good icebox can be a certain, a, a versatile addition a to it. A good any, icebox any is setup. great. Yeah. Like before yeah. we actually had um, a fridge or we're sort of in that situation where we've got like a 30 – five litre, I think it's a 36 litre fridge or something like that. And for a little while now, it's not been feasible for us to just run that fridge unless it's the two of us. And I know I've Mm -hmm. talked about this before. So if you're someone who tunes in all the time, sorry to rehash old ground, (laughs) but we have used an icebox in that same situation where fridge runs as a freezer, you pull your food out, goes in the icebox that, you know, and then that's the way it works. And that's worked really well for a long time. But now we're at the point where we're like, okay, well, we understand that our needs are almost always consistently needing more space. So we're just going to upgrade to a fridge, but that's given us the option. And in, in this particular instance, it's my family who has the icebox. So we didn't even need to fork out the cash because we could just borrow that icebox. But that's an example of over, say, the last three to four years, that system's worked really well for us and it's gotten us to a point where we've made a decision that actually, yes, we definitely do need a bigger fridge. And so we're working towards buying a piece of kit that we know we definitely need. So we're investing in something that is functional for us and it's not overkill. Yeah, okay. And I think that sort of is where it can give you the flexibility. Okay. And I think starting off with an ice box, a good quality ice box, like if you're using an Esky, just bugger that one off because it's not going to be great. Invest in like a good proper icebox yep. and see how that treats you for your trips because it's sort of only really after you exhaust all functionality with that particular icebox that you then know that you actually really do need a 12-volt fridge. And that icebox is, like you say, still going to be useful afterwards. It's, it's still not, going to be useful. obsolete. It's mm-hmm. still useful. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people like in the more budget sort of friendly models or entry level options like the brass monkey fridges and things like that. A lot of people buy them because they don't want to buy an an ice box and they do want a cheap Mm. fridge that they can just chuck in their car for day trips and beaches and things like that. Um, So it's, it's, yeah, it just sort of comes, comes down to your needs, but definitely don't knock an ice box. I think it's probably one of the most underrated pieces of camping equipment personally. Yep. If you yeah. get a good quality one. The only reason I don't take mine as much anymore is because it, it, I've, when the fridge and the ice box and I'm mm. quite pushed for space in the back of my car with four of us and I don't tow a trailer, Yeah, that extra sort of space that the ice box takes is quite a lot when I can just use basic tubs in there. But I do often think oh, it would be good if I had the ice box in there because of it. I, I'll run a fridge. Mm. Even a fridge and an ice box is good because sometimes fruit and veg – like the fridge might be a bit full, but the fruit and veg is okay in the ice box just for a day yeah. and then I'll put it back in the fridge just to kind of keep it cool. So, um, But if it was just sitting in the car, it would get roasted and it would be no good after a day. I think also, you know, the title of this episode is Fridges v Ice Boxes, but I don't really think that they're a versus thing personally. I think they're two very different products and they meet two very different needs mm-hmm. and which one is going to be right for you depending on where you are in your journey is yeah. – it just important to sort of sit down and work that out because as you say, running a fridge is something that also then requires an extra, you know, auxiliary power yep. of some description if you're yep. not going to be camping at a caravan park yeah. at powered sites and that sort of stuff. And so generally I think that people who are at the point where they are wanting to buy a fridge are – already past the point of needing auxiliary power anyway. You know what I mean? Because yep. they're already wanting to charge lights and whatever and they're like, okay, this fridge is what I've got on on my radar. Yeah, so that auxiliary power is not just for the fridge. It's also for yeah, um, yeah charging devices, char- uh, powering, yeah, That's LED right. lights, et cetera, et cetera, in the campsite. Yeah. yeah. Although there are a lot of sort of um, people who do buy a fridge and all they want is just a power pack to charge the fridge. I was going to say, um, yeah, you can get external That's sort of coming too, up. So. Yeah, I think that's becoming a bit more common with more and more people getting into camping 
camping these days and more and more people just maybe having a little sedan or mm. a hatch or, or something like that where they just want to chuck their camping gear in the boot and they don't necessarily have a big 12-volt power system or all mm. that sort of stuff. So there are little portable power pack options that you can get. And there are also fridges like the Mike Coolman, for example, where you can buy a external battery pack. external battery yeah. pack that powers your fridge. I can't, I don't have the specs on me, but it's you know a good so couple I think of it's hours. About Sixteen hours it'll go yeah, up. To, it yeah. Go, yeah, yeah, and it's that's something that you can charge at home on two forty volt when you're driving around with your car. It's plugged into your twelve volt outlet in your car. The fridge is perfectly running, and it gives you six hours. I mean, six, yep. up to sixteen hours of runtime, yep. and it's just it it's like a long skinny magnets to the side of your fridge it's not yep. that big a deal and there are other ones like um there's variations uh, companion have got some companion, goal yeah, zero do them there's yeah. A, yeah, a heap of external yeah packs. but then companion do a fridge that has an inbuilt battery oh, built in. yeah yeah um, as well so you charge yep. that when you're home and it sort of runs off itself S- similar deal so there are options for people who might want to upgrade to a fridge but aren't ready to upgrade to a 12 volt power system yeah Probably um, good for those, say, with wagons or like that use um, their cars around the city. Yeah. And it's not set up like someone who's got a four wheel drive and has set it up for camping and they've yeah. got plugs and, and it's all set up just for camping. Mm-hmm. For those who use uh, probably a station wagon or an SUV is a good example. It's a work vehicle during the week and then they load it up with camping stuff for the weekends. Mm. That um, removable option is, is good because yeah. you can. You can put the pack in there when you need it, take it out when you don't, charge it, like you say, charge it in the car. And then when you're in the campsite, you're not attached to your car either with that stuff. You can take yeah. it out and put it in your tent awning or whatever. So, But, again, yeah. that is an initial cost outlay. So, so yeah, if yeah if the if icebox is a really good starting point, good quality so, icebox. Yeah, yeah. So if you want a fridge, you're probably doing it because you know you're going to be doing longer-term trips. You're not just a weekend warrior. Mm. Uh, and you're prepared to spend not just on the fridge but power options mm-hmm. if you just – want a better option for probably, I don't know, two to three day camping trips now and then, you're not doing it all the time, then an icebox is is probably yeah. going to be your best option if, if you don't want to fork out for the fridge straight up. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, I think that's um, I think that's covered off. I don't have any other tips and advice. I've come up with some new stuff as we've mm. talked along here. Yeah, you're maybe some good ideas. Run a fridge just to freeze your ice breaks. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think we're done. I'm sure uh, we've got heaps of advice from some of our viewers out there how they run it. I know some of our viewers actually camp out a really small sedan, so really yeah. interested to hear their views on uh, on how they manage keeping their food cold. So let us know in the Snowy's Facebook group. Um, if you haven't joined, ask us and we'll let you in. Uh, subscribe via YouTube or via your favourite podcast app. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, folks. See ya.